Today, I'm gonna to take you to the stars with this telescope. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I'm standing next to my Celestron Power Seeker 127 EQ Equatorial Telescope. Now, I wish I were an expert on telescopes. I am just a novice, just your average guy that thinks telescopes are pretty cool. When I was a kid, I used to have kind of a simple telescope. I'm not sure even what the magnification was on it, but it's just kind of one of the ones that you look through it. And I really liked it and loved going out and looking at the stars and was enamored with space and dreamed of being an astronaut and all those types of things. And so I thought, you know, why not pick up a pretty decent little telescope. Now this one I think is called a beginner telescope and what's interesting about this is that as opposed to the telescope that I had as a kid that you look through one end and it had a big magnifier on this end, this is a telescope where you look down here and basically you are looking at this reflector and the main reflector for the telescope is all the way in the back. So the image kind of comes in here, gets bounced up here and through the eyepiece. And it's always been a cool looking telescope. These always seem to mean real business to me. Now, I will tell you that I also picked this up because it's an affordable telescope at about 140 bucks or something like that. I think that this, at maximum magnification, it's like 250X. So it's a really good value just for enjoying a little stargazing or spying on your neighbors or whatever you want to do. So I've actually had this for a while and I've actually never used it. I've always been meaning to, but I didn't want to go outside and set it up. And, you know, you always get busy with stuff. And then when you're about to do it, it's cloudy overhead or whatever. But tonight is supposed to be actually a pretty clear night. It's pretty cool. And we have a fairly good moon tonight. It's not a full moon, but it should be a pretty bright moon. So I thought we would take a look at that and just kind of get a gauge of what this telescope can do. Now, a few years ago, when I actually bought it, I put it together and I did a video on putting it together and assembling it. It wasn't that bad, but it takes a little time and if you do have this telescope and you want to put it together I would really recommend checking out that video because it took me a little while to do it but with some instruction I think it's a lot easier. Now you will see here it comes with this pretty big aluminum base these metal legs in here will slide out so you can definitely raise it up it's kind of like an easel it's got this bottom port right here where I can put this cover off the front of the telescope which is really nice the whole thing sits on like this gimbal here and so it will kind of cant back and forth it has this weight to counterbalance everything and then you can make some adjustments here these little dials here allow you to adjust it you can see here that it moves just ever so slightly left right back forth up down and those are actually really important because as I was testing this little bad boy out what I have found is that when things are a long ways away the littlest adjustment here makes a big big difference so uh, these are pretty important and then they also have some measurements here I think that's for helping figuring out where stuff is in the sky I actually thought and you might be like me that one of the cool things about this would be to find the International Space Station in the sky apparently they do chart that and you can actually see it through a decent telescope so I have not done that and I feel like it's a little bit like looking for a needle in a haystack but that'd be pretty cool to be able to see the space station which is in orbit now up here obviously we have the telescope and the main tube we have this little kind of auxiliary aiming device here. It's almost like a little telescope in and of itself, and that's gonna help you just kind of zero it in, kind of get it aligned, say, with the moon. Uh, and and so you know that it is lined up generally with the telescope so that you can find it because this actually only tracks a very small portion of the sky. So if you were trying to find something even as large as the moon, it might take you a little while to find it. Now, this is the eyepiece here. And if I pull off the cover there, you can see that this is the uh, lower magnification eyepiece, I believe. So you can actually put in the more powerful one and then you focus it by turning these knobs here. And what that does is it moves the eyepiece up and down. There are also some contraptions where you can clamp on say a camera or a phone like this so that you can see in there and obviously you can see a little bit but i'm going to try that tonight to share some images that i can get through this we'll see how well it works through the camera here i'm not expecting the greatest things in the world but what i really am impressed with here is just the overall look and construction of this and it actually has really nice presence it looks nice if you have an office or a living room i think you could display this it just is a cool looking piece and like I said, because it's meant for beginners, enthusiasts, hobbyists, you know, as opposed to people that take it really seriously, it's just affordable and seems to work pretty well, especially in daylight, no problems with it. But we will see tonight when we take a look at the moon, we'll see what we can see. So I'm out here with the telescope, might be a little hard to see, but I've got a pretty decent moon tonight. It is a waning moon. Full moon was, I don't know, four or five days ago. So wasn't able to get out here quite then, but it's also not pitch black. I've got the neighborhood lights on, 
you know, the lights behind me, so it's not exactly totally dark. I can't even see some stars. Well, I guess I can see a few, but it's not really one of those pitch black nights, mostly because of the moon reflecting the light. Now, I've got the telescope set up here, and I've tried to dial it in here, and you can see the little light right here. That is the eyepiece for this telescope, so I'm going to try to show it to you and see if we can see what the moon looks like through it. I took a peek. It's pretty cool. Let's take a look. Now, playing around with this telescope really did bring out the kid in me again. It's kind of amazing to see things that are really far away and see them up close. Now, I apologize for the shaky camera work here. I didn't really have any other way to get imagery out of this except for holding the camera up to the IP. So I was trying to get it dialed in. There are a couple things that I realized here. One, the magnification is pretty good. And I will tell you that I think it's really due to the aperture size. So I think it's 127 millimeter aperture. And that's really how much much light it collects and I think that's what gives you a really good image here of the moon despite how far away it is. Now it looks a little overexposed on the camera. It actually looks really good to the naked eye but you can see you know the lunar craters and texture of the moon. It's really awesome. You can see the light and dark spots of it. The other thing that I will mention here that I really didn't think about at the time, and it's not something that you notice for, with the naked eye, is that the moon is moving at a pretty good clip across the sky. What I was doing here is dialing in the telescope by hand, looking through it, and then I would get my camera out to record it. And what I was noticing is that the moon was 20, 30% out of the picture already by the time that I got my camera up there, which was not a long period of time. And you can actually see it moving here within this shot. It gets about uh, 40, 50% out of the view of the telescope and I will also tell you that this footage is slowed down by 50% just because I was moving the camera around and I was trying to minimize that shakiness for you so it doesn't even really show how quickly it's moving out of frame here so it's really kind of cool and that's what makes those little manual adjustments so important because you're continually twisting those to move the telescope around to continue to track that so it's really kind of interesting now I'm not sure if when it gets overhead the image I think was even better because you're not kind of cutting through the atmosphere atmosphere horizontally and getting atmospheric distortion. So overhead, I think the picture might be a little clearer. The image might be a little brighter. And on top of that, maybe it doesn't move quite as much or quite as quickly at that point either. But it was really cool to be able to see that. And it's really interesting because I think something like this, if you get some of those apps to track celestial events, you might be able to see some really cool images of planets or the space station or other celestial heavenly bodies. And so especially in the winter when the air is cold and you can get kind of a nice crisp shot through the atmosphere I think it could be a lot of fun if you want to pick up the Celestron 127 EQ I think it is a great bang for the buck and a great little telescope that'll keep you entertained for a long time I will put a link to it in the description below Peter Von Panda out